Welcome to this lesson about bars and crosses using the finite elements analysis method. Uh, this uh, uh, lesson will build on the previous lessons uh, of how to create and assemble the uh, finite element equations and uh, also will build on the uh, weighted residual methods that uh, have been covered earlier in this course. The first part or the first video of this lesson will uh, demonstrate how can we derive the element equation using vectors instead of series uh, presentation as we used before. This is uh, to uh, enhance our capabilities and uh, allow us to uh, build further and create more complex models as we go on. First, let, let's record that uh, the element, the bar element that we are talking about, is a one-dimensional element that extends between two nodes, node number one and node number two. Uh, it has uh, two degrees of freedom, a displacement u1 at node one and displacement u2 at node two. Also, it may have concentrated forces, p1 and p2, at nodes node one and node two as well. Also, uh, there may be a distributed or uh, an external field distributed all over the uh, bar element, which we can uh, involve in our equations. The uh, Gallatin method describes the uh, integral uh, of the residue uh, using this relation, which you may recall from previous lessons. Uh, now, let's use the presentation uh, that n of x, the uh, trial functions or the interpolation functions, can be written in a vector form as a row vector in which n1 is a scalar quantity, n2 is a scalar function, sorry, uh, scalar function and a scalar function, both put in a single uh, row vector. If we use these row vectors back into the original equation of Gallatin, we will find that the ends, the derivatives of the n vector will appear column row, column multiplied by row, that will give us a matrix. And on the right hand side, we'll have the column vector multiplied by the distributed load f of x, which will create our uh, generalized force uh, vector uh, plus the effect, of course, of the concentrated forces. This part is the core of our interest. This is where we create the stiffness matrix of the bar L. Thus, we can extract this integration and call it the stiffness matrix, and it can be Later, the equation will be the stiffness matrix multiplied by the displacement vector equal to the right-hand side. Now, if we recall from the interpolation function review that n of x is equal to h of x, which is a, a vector, a row vector, uh, made up of single uh, polynomial terms, uh, specifically in this case it was 1 and x, multiplied by the inverse of the transformation matrix. If we use this back into the equation of the stiffness matrix, we will get a quite an interesting uh, relation. The integration hasn't changed. It's exactly the same integration. But now we can pull out the inverse transformation matrix from the right and from the left. And the whole integration is uh, left to us in terms of very simple terms, which are 1 and x, 1 and x. When we multiply this, we got also a matrix of single term uh, uh, polynomials, uh, which can be easily integrated by hand or uh, uh, by a symbolic manipulator. We are going to actually utilize this more when we come to integrating using 
a numerical integration. Uh, in that case, it's uh, it's much more e uh, much uh, sorry much easier uh, to uh, use the simple polynomial uh, vectors in the numerical integration. In the coming video, we will be talking about the uh, derivation of the uh, uh, stiffness matrix using a um, uh, symbolic manipulator, Maxima, and later we will show how to create and run the octave uh, code as well, uh, and, uh, for, uh, and later the process.